What's going on, tool groupies, do-it-yourselfers? It's the Backwoods Mechanic here. You can also find me on Facebook under Backwoods Hippie Garage. Today doing just a little bit of mobile mechanic work. I done uh, put some brand new tires, four brand new tires, West Lake tires on this Ford F-150 2002 model truck, sport, flare side. Done a lot of work to this, just replaced a uh, tailgate handle just a few weeks ago, uploaded that. I got the front end of it a little bit. I didn't do such a great video on it. I'll still post it in the link in the description box below for the basics of changing the front brakes. But in all seriousness, we'll get down, change the back brake pads. You're doing this yourself for the first time. This is what I try to accomplish. I try to show everybody with the most basic, simple tools. No impact guns, no fancy stuff, the cheap stuff. I want to use the cheap stuff just to show people you can do this at home if you need to without going out here and invest it in a ton of equipment. So let's see what we're looking at today. First of all, you're going to have to jack up your vehicle. I've got a good Craftsman jack. Got it. Two jack stands and a creeper on sale at Sears Hometown Country Store. I'll put it in the link in the description box below also. I got big red jack stands along with the two Craftsman jack stands. Three ton. As you can see right here. 3 ton jack stand. And of course, you're going to need your basic lug wrench. This one is a Kinzer, by the way. This is the top of the line lug wrench. If you want some Ken tool made in the USA, this damn thing is really sturdy, really strong. It's not for like minivans, it's for trucks and stuff. And of course, you're going to need your ball peen hammer, wire brush, screwdriver, some sockets just to get started. Now, of course, 13 16 lug nuts if it's a 2002. Ford F-150, flare side, bed. And then here's what you'll be looking at. The brake shoes are right here, as you can see there. Very, very thin. Not very much brake shoe left. Surprised it ain't hitting the metal yet. And what you gotta do is, you gotta take these slide bolts here, loose, there's two of them, one right here, one right here. This is a really small, really small side of your hand, all right? caliber take it off there now what i like doing is taking your basic little wrench this is a 10 millimeter wrench it's task force it's very old it used to come from lowe's had it for years still works fine you fit it on there now if you're looking at it and it's facing you if you're looking at it and righty is tidy that way then it's lefty loosey facing you just remember that take your ball peen hammer just barely peck on it a little bit enough to loosen it up on each one of those and then you can take your thumb wheel ratchet little 10 millimeter socket twist it off by hand easy peasy now this is what's called a thumb wheel ratchet palm of your hand this is by pittsburgh pro pick it up harbor freight and this is a bench top socket six point very old socket there we go as you can see it makes life so much easier is what this is for and it's five dollars you can get three of them at harbor freight Sorry about the video focusing, as you can see though. It just makes life so much easier. You can use your hand, twist it, gives you something to grab onto, and it pulls the slide bolts right out. And you go straight down to the next one. You ain't got a whole lot of room. And you can do it by hand. Like I said, it makes life so much easier. And you can get three of them for $5. Now, if you pull those out, get yourself a flathead screwdriver, slotted screwdriver, whatever you call it. This is Craftsman. And then you just take it, wiggle it around, make sure everything's coming loose, and pay attention to how you're taking it off there and how everything's sitting in place. If you are inexperienced at doing this, and this will start popping right off here, just like so, one handed, and there you go. There's what the brakes look like. As you can see, very, very, very thin. Very thin. Won't been long, been metal to metal. And if you need to change your rotor, you can pull it right off, put one right back on. Now, if you're going to sit this thing down on something, put something to where it'll lay it straight down. Don't let the, the hose just hang there or set it up here because you're going to have to take these brake pads off and then you're going to have to push this piston right back in there. All it takes a basic little screwdriver, you hold it, you pry up on this, pull this brake pad out, and then this one pops straight out like so. As you can see in behind it there, and that's how you put the new ones back on. Now if you're having a problem with this, you just pry in behind it with your flathead screwdriver and bend the hell out of this thing. 
then pop it off there because that tension from that piece of metal holds it in these sockets here makes it a little bit of a pain in the ass to get off but if you bend it loose it'll pop straight off there a lot easier than we'll trying to pry on the thing as you can see one-handed that one's off and then you pull the back one towards you because it sits inside of that and then that one's off and you get your new ones and of course i get mine from car quest wherever brake pads gold premium brake pads limited lifetime warranty which means these things should do good they shouldn't just wear out all of a sudden unless there's something else majorly wrong and they are good brake pads part number gnad 711 ceramic with brake hardware made in india they come with all your little accessories your clips and stuff that you might need to put in and then of course you want to make sure always that your brake pads are matched up by setting them side by side looking at every little detail on them making sure there's nothing major out of context because some makes and models of vehicles might get switched from another especially if you're not sure of your engine size or you know something like that they got a bunch of different stuff on vehicles these days easily get the wrong kind of brake pads brake shoes whatever it is you're getting so just make sure everything matches up before you put the other ones on then take yourself an old brake pad put it in here get yourself a c-clamp put it over this and start twisting to push that piston back in there now once you get it locked in place halfway decent to where it'll get a good bite on it you can take yourself that same 10 millimeter wrench put it on here and help use it as a leverage to torque this thing and it will slowly start pushing that back and it also helps you take the cap off where you had your brake fluid at so that it'll slowly push some of that stuff back out the fluid back out the air back out make sure you have some brake fluid on hand if you low because you might have to add some and check it afterwards now of course a longer c-clamp will be better for these applications and two short ones are perfectly fine for the double pistons which is up front but you kind of need a longer one for the back but if you got a short one it still works or quite frankly you could even put your brand new brake pad in here but i don't like dinging up the pads with the c-clamp but you could put them in there if you absolutely had to and help push it back but once you get it pushed back you put your brake shoes your brake pads rather where they go this one just snaps right into place and then of course this one is going to snap in place over top of where those two holes are and as you can see there is little nubs right in behind those because it pushes from the inside and that metal helps clamp it to it hold it in place now once you start pushing it down in there you can see little guiders inside of the actual caliber itself that'll help guide you out on in there now once you get this far you could take the little ball peen hammer and you could peck on it a little bit at a time and it'll snap it right in place see if we do it without and poof it is snapped in place right where it needs to be now once you got all that done next thing next you take you replace these little caps right here or you can clean them off leave them on there of course i recommend putting the new ones on but when you pull these off you're going to want to scrape all that rust out from under here with a wire brush take some good brake cleaner to all this stuff put a little bit of grease in there so to keep it from rusting and then you slide this right back up here on this over top of your rotor make sure it fits and then Put your bolts back in place but it's also good while we're talking about it where these little sliders are that's where your slider bolts go so it lets your caliber move back and forth it's always good to make sure that they move easily that they've got suction on them because you can always take a greasing needle it looks like a needle like a syringe just like you get at a doctor's office pick it up you can bit up places like car quest you slap it onto the end of a grease gun you can squirt grease right in behind there make sure it's got good grease because if these things lock up you're done you're going to have to go get yourself a new caliber or you're gonna to have to drill them things out they can be a pain in the ass if they seize up on you so you want to make sure they're greased and they're moving good now when you go to put these on you see there's little grooves right there in the brake shoe they have to go over the top first and then they make their way down to the bottom and hook in right there so always start them at an angle like that before you push them over your rotors and as you're sliding it in place those little slide pins might get in the way so you have to pull them back as you're pushing this on here and then before you know it right there you go so you can see those are locked in to the top it slides in on the bottom so this is ready to go it's ready to put my new 
the sliders right back in here. It wouldn't hurt to put some grease or lube on them before you slide them in. Tighten them up. Of course, if I don't use grease or something, I love using deep creep. This stuff loosens any type of rusty bolt up in the world. This is some of the best stuff I have ever seen. You can pick it up at CarQuest, a few other retailers, also known as Seafoam. But Seafoam Deep Creep is amazing. It's just amazing. And of course, once everything is nice and lubed up, tightened up how you want to, get your sliders right in here, your slider bolts. And you can take that little thumb wheel and sit here and tighten them up. They fit in nice tight spaces. They make it real easy to get a hold of in blind spots. My hands are a little bit greasy here and they still work good. And I can hand tighten them. And then once you get that done, of course, take your actual 10 millimeter wrench here and put it on it and put a little bit of torque to it just to make sure that they're nice and tight with your actual wrench. I put my box in on it now that I got a little bit of torque to it, but just enough pressure to make sure that I know that it's tight, but not tight enough to break it. And then boom, your brakes are changed in 10 minutes. And all I basically needed to do this was the new brake shoes. I needed the jack, of course. And I had a 10 millimeter wrench, a ball peen hammer, a screwdriver, a thumb wheel, and a 10 millimeter. That's it. That's basically the essentials of what you need to change your rear brakes on one of these Ford F-150 trucks.